and Mrs. Gordon. They are from Jeffertown Farmers Association and um, Jet FM Radio. I have Mr. Wordsworth Gordon over there and this is Mrs. Ivy Gordon. And I have a few questions for them. Why did the UN choose the Jeffertown Farmers Association to give such a prestigious award? Um, to say it, I can't tell you why they chose us. They thought we were good enough. We've done um, a whole amount of work over a long period of years. The Farmers Association, it formed in 1991. And since then, we've been doing development work in our community, starting with water, um, looking for ways to help the farmers improve their income and their productivity after bananas were no longer gold. And um, from then, a series of things from um, an internet, bringing the internet to the community, doing, uh, launching our own community radio. Um, the association itself does group farming projects and then we've taken on environmental work as well. The environmental work would be some huge gabion walls in Wallingford, that's down in the valley. Check dams on the hillside to slow down the water. We've put contours of pineapple to stop the topsoil coming off. We've done um, composting. Mr. Gordon, an exponent in growing strawberries in his organic greenhouse. And then I make jam with it. And we are um, quite renowned for working with breadfruit from doing our breadfruit festival from 2005. And because of that, we've made a range of breadfruit products using breadfruit in all kinds of various fashions but the most serious um, value-added products would be the flour and the muffin mix made with the flour from the dried breadfruit. The, 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 over a period and the work that we completed um, was mainly although it was for economic purposes to improve the, the, the livelihood of the farmers um, you can't do good farming without good practice and the practice in itself to implement um, good farming and good practice. We have to deal with environmental issues and basically um, we try to deal with all of the um, problems associated with that. For example, land slippage, land movement, soil erosion and um, earlier in the, 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 the piece for in the 60s, check dams was a part of the practice of good land husbandry and um, with the demise of banana, people stopped, stopped practicing that. So we have to bring that back as part of the old process to keep the, 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 the valley from flooding or the hillside from falling down to the valley. Yeah. I always like to tell people about our community, a personal experience. In 2004, when we had Hurricane Ivan, that was September the 4th, and we lost our electricity that day, obviously, and we got back our light in October, Heroes Weekend. Our roads were blocked. As I said, no telephone. It was, it was like, bit for me, it was like being in the Dark Ages. Yes. And, but last, in 2012, after Sandy, 
after the continued efforts of the Farmers Association within the community with help from all sorts of funding agencies, right? And friends, many, many people have helped us. But in 2012, after Hurricane Sandy, and you'll be uh, aware of that because of the effects of it when it became a superstorm here in New York, right? We were able to, we didn't have light for one day because we had to take, uh, we had to shut down our solar system at the Jeffreytown Farmers Building, right? But the day after the storm, we could turn back on our, our alternative energy. Our farmers will be able to, were able to bring all of their things, all of their livestock, their frozen chicken, poultry, and put them in the central freezers. We were able to charge our telephones. The group went out and cleared the roads. They picked up the telephone, the, the um, electric wires. They sawed off the limbs. And within a couple of days, Jeffrey Town was Jeffrey Town. When they came through to clear the road three weeks later, we're like, we had our road, we had our roads cleared in five hours after we cleared the road. So, this is the essence of the work. It's we didn't do it for anything than for ourselves. Not me and him, but for us collectively. We do these things because no one was helping us. When I first moved there in um, '94, we didn't have any telephone landline telephones. We still don't. We lobbied and we lobbied and we lobbied, but we, we did everything else to, to make ourselves. We, we had to bring our own internet. We, we were the first to bring internet to our community. We have a hotspot there now, providing access, free access to the community through the work of the Farmers Association. In the, in the rural areas, in the earlier days, they used to run the electricity uh, on the main roads and if you live off the main road you had to pay for the poles and the wire to your house but through the efforts largely Mr. Borden we got rural electrification so JPS came and put the posts in and ran the wire on our streets so all we have to do is string our houses and that's huge we put our own electricity in our own house before we came here but the poles were rotting and I was worrying every day when I'm walking in looking at the posts and seeing the chichi eating the posts and thinking how are we going to get the money to, to, to do it again? But So there was an element of self-need but we were in a group of people who were seeing the needs and, and that is what we've done over the period of time and we've added to all of that Jet FM it, the radio station, it's our community radio station it's run by volunteers as is everything that we do but the radio has programs on it telling our community about the work we're doing and telling them why we're doing it so that they can learn and copy for themselves. So for example, I, I say to you that we have re-roofed some houses on a street called Carter Mountain. 20 houses up there, five, had, five got new roofs, but 20 houses all had the roofs retrofitted with gutters to be able to collect the rainwater. Two reasons, one, because we have a water shortage, and two, because they're on the top of the hill and the water is gushing down the hill and tearing away the hillside. So we did that with grant funding to help us continue to live on the hill. But we, we made the radio programs to help other people right across St. Mary understand the importance of gathering water from your rooftop, harvesting the water, because water is a continual problem. I'm thankful for one that um, you guys chose to, you know, represent our community in such a way that we are all the way here in the United States and we are feeling, you know, the presence, we're feeling the work, we're seeing the work for one community in Jamaica to win this Equator Initiative. Yes, so we're, so we're really, we really feel pleased about it. We understand that um, the prize giving event is a, a high profile thing. They're inviting um, Al Gore to give the keynote address. You know that he's um, won the Nobel Peace Prize for the environment. And Helen Clark is the UN ambassador, she'll be there. And Ban Ki-moon, the secretary general. All of them will be there. We're, in, we're invited to the climate summit on Tuesday. Let the, um, the people who are working with us, the facilitators for the community dialogues, 
are saying to us that we are their soldiers, we are the foot soldiers who are working with climate change on the ground and they really want to hear what we are doing and they want us to say to the people who have the power, the people who make the decisions, if it's only one thing that we want them to hear from us, the cry of the people. We have looked at food security as the issue we would speak about because we know that we eat more rice and flour than we eat yam and banana. And there has to be a change in Jamaica if we're ever going to reduce our import bill for food. We have to start growing and eating what grows in Jamaica. On that issue, one tend to think about um, rice and flour, as um, I mentioned by Ivy. But the situation is, climate change is affecting the entire world. Right? And wheat production and rice production will be falling. They will be having lengths if we, say for example, um, the wheat in America or Russia, wherever that they grow wheat, was to have a serious um, disaster. What would we do as Caribbean people if we're depending on rice or flour? Right? We need to start to look at producing our own indigenous food right? and create a creative way of um, serving it or preparing it rather than the normal way that got bored, our children got bored with. We need to, we need to um, pep it up and therefore what we're doing in our, our agro-processing is to do exactly that to process it in a different fashion and present it in a different fashion so that it becomes more palatable using our own spices and our own flavor right? and um, that's a vision that, that I personally um, feel will be successful and we've already started with our breadfruit um, muffin mix which um, has been tested around the place and it's, it's a good success uh, that um, um, we as um, Caribbean people. I can't speak for anybody else because we are the ones who are going to be facing the more frequent and stronger hurricanes. We are the ones who are going to be um, um, having the, the sea level rise and all sorts of things and we need to start to look at how we can um, be um, resilient right, in our um, um, food security. So we, we, have, we have to look at producing our starches. We have to do our own starches and capitalize on it, you know, because it's, it's, it's a simple thing is that if we look at now and don't look at it in the future, because climate change is here, it's not going to reverse in a short period of time. So therefore we've got to be um, adapting to and making sure that our food security is well secured. So I brought you some samples of the things that we are doing at home. I brought you the breadfruit flour. I brought you the breadfruit muffin mix, um, and my favorite product, the strawberry jam. It's strawberry conserve grown organically. And then um, some, of our, some, of our, some of our more fanciful stuff. We have a breadfruit liqueur and um, a jar of our honey. So all of them from Jeffrey Town. You guys are doing some great stuff, some really wonderful stuff, and um, I am also aware that you guys had received the 2011 Michael Manley um, Self-Reliance Award. That's huge. Like, that is very huge, and um, could you, like, go into a few details about what does that entail? Well, firstly, I would say to you that we won the Michael Manley Award in 2006 first. And then five years later, they came back and we won the award in 2011 because they could see progress. They gave us the award in 2006 because we had a dream and we were working towards it. And when they came in 2011, they could see clearly that we had marked off and moved forward. We completed 1,100 square foot of building. We had been running our community radio 16 hours a day for three years by then. We had our multimedia center open and running. And I say to you again, all of it done with volunteer labor. We had galvanized the spirit of the people to 
provide this service. We were still doing um, our breadfruit festival. We were just started building Gabion walls at that time, and we were contouring with our pineapples still. We were doing all that we were doing now, but the, when they came to us, it was still a dream. We were still planning, we are going to do this and we are going to do that and we hope to do that. And when they came in 2011, they said they really have done it. Right? And, and the, the video at the Michael Manley Award in 2011 showed that. Jet FM Radio, that is the main media source in the community. It bridges the gap between the community and the people and the people and the, um, you know. So, how instrumental was the decision, you know, to operate, to start, first of all, to say, um, let me start a radio station for one. And um, it didn't start like that. All right, give us an idea. <laughs> give us an insight. What happened was, in 2005, we applied for a project called Community Without Borders and that was to bring the internet and I explained to you about the Wi-Fi and the all of them, right? So we applied for that and that was with a, a, government was a government project being facilitated by a group called ICT for Developing Jamaica, ICT for D, Jamaica. And we were implementing the, the multimedia uh, and internet cafe part of it and we were building the first part of our 1100 square foot building. We, ha we initiated a, a groundbreaking ceremony to celebrate that we were going to have internet. Remember we didn't have telephone so the fact that we were going to get internet was... <laughs> so we, we set about setting up this um, groundbreaking ceremony and the people who were facilitating the project said we're going to bring Alton Grizzle from UNESCO. He's going to love Jeffrey Town. So he came that day and, you know, we invited him to break the ground, you know, pretty brand new fork tied a ribbon around it. He broke the ground and then at the meeting afterwards he said to us, would you like a radio? <laughs> and that's actually how it came about. The young people who were there said they want the radio and then we set about trying to do what was required to get it. None of us, none of us had a clue what the radio was, you know, we know what radio is, but none of us are clue about running a radio, how we're going to set it up, and all of those things, and who was going to be presenter. I, for one, I, I, I didn't want have anything to do with it. Um, it was for the youngsters. Um, but it, what it actually did, it, um, it, it galvanized us into making sure that we have somewhere to put the radio. So it, it, um, we, 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 we join our resolves and make sure that um, we could um, actually construct the building. Because the money we had was to build a, a containerized office space. And then um, we realized that the money couldn't purchase the container and do the conversion. But we have a lot of skills within the community in building construction. So what we did, we did the volunteer work, organized and we got the work done. And uh, we put the radio in. We built the storeroom first because we're thinking of hey, we build our storeroom first. We utilize that as the radio room and the multimedia and and the meeting space. Yeah, so um, and then we work our way up, and now we've got 1,100 um, square feet. Project on the last lap of um, approval with the Caribbean Development Bank. It's a disaster risk reduction project um, to help us complete, in inverted commas, complete the disaster risk reduction process in our community. That means we'll build a couple more Gabion walls, we'll harvest water from three or four more springs, we'll put in some greenhouses to, to grow Irish potato seed so that we'll have clean planting stock to plant our Irish potatoes at the designated time so we can improve our starch production. It will give us a drying house so that we can dry all of the starches, that is our breadfruit starch, our, our, our sweet potato, our dasheen, grind them to flour, sell some, give everybody who's dasheen and sweet potato and whatever it is they bring to dry back their portion 
for their own food security and then we sell some as well so the idea is that if there's a storm and the banana's gone the yams turned up and shoved out of the ground because that's what happened the last time right that when there's no food we will have our buckets of dried breadfruit sweet potato cassava we can't go hungry and do everybody everybody who grows it will have their little 10 pound buckets like this of dried starch another component is um, about seed um, um, what do you call it um, seed bank creating a seed bank so that um, for example when there's a disaster hurricane we wait on them um, to get seeds from donor countries and sometimes the seeds are they, they, they don't germinate Oh, they're in from so old seeds, right? So what we what we tend to do are we get a lot of the same type of seeds like cauliflower or broccoli, and then if everybody plant broccoli, you know, you know what happens? We get gluts and it goes to waste. So what we want to do is um, have our own seed bank so that we can recover quicker because we'll have our seeds, we can immediately put them um, to germinate and we'll be able to produce and recover quick, quicker from um, a disaster. So that, those are sort of things that we, we, we're talking about. Building resilience. If you go back to the beginning, you asked us what the prize is for. The prize is for all of these things over a period of years. But all of the work is to help us take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, could you guys give me an insight into some of the projects that you have worked on in the community, like building, I'm told that you guys had a health, health center that you guys were working on, and um, g give me like some insights. The health center was damaged, that's the maternity clinic in Jeffrey Town was damaged in 1988, right? Hurricane Gilbert. And from Hurricane Gilbert until... Um, 2008, 2009, members of the Farmers Association maintained the clinic. They brushed the yard, they built a separate bathroom, they built a sh shaded area because it was um, in a dilapidated and terrible condition. But it was the only maternity clinic we had. And then now uh, um, we lobbied for a new clinic. There was talk that people wanted to close it down, but we fought against it and we said, no, we cannot close it because if you close it, we'll never get it back. So um, we lobbied for it and they got money from the Digicel Foundation and the Chase Fund and they built a new clinic and it opened in 2010, right? The Farmers Association didn't participate in the building of the clinic, but the community did. One of our representatives, Stanley Archer, led that part of the process as a representative of the farm. Or oh, Paul Brown as well, yes, yes. Mm. The we're back to the breadfruit festival because that was my favorite time of the year okay i got to come i got to eat the, the weird stuff that i'm not even i can't even tell you what's in it but i just know that it tastes good and um give me an idea of the type of work that goes into production list some of the byproducts that you guys um you know have from some of these crops some of them we did not even know existed okay can I just I'll start on that because it was my conception. I, I'm, I'm a breadfruit lover. I grew up on breadfruit, but um, not just for roasting and boiling. My grandmother used to make other stuff from breadfruit. Right? Like, for example, the breadfruit shoot. She would um, dice them, um, boil them in sugar, and make sweets. Right? And um, the breadfruit, she, she would mash the breadfruit just like you would do mashed potato. I, I should boil it and dice it and make salad. And um, things like that. And I'm saying, when I got back to Jamaica and I realized that there was a demise of breadfruit. There was the breadfruit, the breadfruit was dying. With the, the, the dying, the banana demise, breadfruit demise. And uh, we were talking about raising funds for the, for the group. And what can we do to raise funds? And that's when I come up, so we're right up with a breadfruit festival. Because if you can do a jerk festival, breadfruit goes with anything and everything. And um, that was this conceptualizing of it. And um, we actually got our own money 
out of our own pockets. A um, few members of the, the, the executive, myself and um, Ms. Gordon, bore the brunt of it. But because I believed in it and I'm, we, we, we staged it ourselves. We have some experience of um, putting on events from our experience in London. So um, we were the ones who actually put it all together and spearheaded the thing. Um, the community, in a sense, of members of the group rallied round and getting the, 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 the ground prepared and all the rest of it. But if, the, the most important thing about it is the impact on the community members. Because when we started it and we promoted it, they were um, very skeptical. And um, when I tried to explain to them that we could um, have a tourism cons um, product, and they didn't believe. And I remember one young man in particular. He he didn't. We we in the first one we made a lot of stalls. We want everybody to get involved. So they were more sellers than buyers. <laughs> but the point was to get them involved. And this young man he came in at the last minute. And um, I remember he came to me and he was shaking like a leaf with a twenty Canadian dollar. Can you change this? And I thought, great, I made the point because I said you will be having foreign currency in your hand, right? But you could be earning. And, and it took off from there. It is very expensive to put on because we have no infrastructure. And, and with the recession, there's no um, funding or sponsorship. But um, I, I, we are planning because I think it's all grown the community. We are planning to take it to the parish because we renamed it. used to be Jeffertown Breadfruit Festival, and we renamed it St. Mary Breadfruit Festival. So we are expecting the parish now to, 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 to get involved in the, in the, in the promotion of uh, the Breadfruit Festival. The Parish Development Committee had the pre preliminary discussions and with the customers of the parish to, to move it as a parish event so that we can um, have more support, more sponsorship. Amical de Oco. This two-way central Africa is reinforcing the greater pains
sustainable agricultural techniques and disaster risk reduction strategies. One more round of applause. Atlanta is a final. 